Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to part 15 of Banjo-Kazooie, where we're going to be finishing up Rusty Bucket Bay. The place where you gotta create toll bridges with eggs. The place with explosive dynamite boxes that uh, invulnerability can get rid of, but also uh, making sure that the, bo the box explodes on itself can help out pretty well, too. Uh, but there's no- I think you can shoot eggs at it too, but I never actually tried it. See, I don't like using the egg attack because I don't like wasting that ammo when it's used for puzzles and stuff, you know? I'm kind of weird like that. I'm just like, well, it's a, it's a finite resource that I need for puzzles, and I don't want to have, have to backtrack for eggs and stuff. Leap of faith! Ow! <laughs> I don't know why. Every time I attempt that puzzle, I don't even try to soften my fall. I probably do have enough time to make it under that cage anyway, but I'm just like, nope! <laughs> no pain, no gain! I'm not gonna get that jiggy unless I break my leg. I don't care. Like, oh, Jesus! Some of these entrances are fake, and some you can't actually go in. This is one uh, musical note in here that I had to backtrack forever during my test playthrough. Behind this fridge, there's a musical note. I swear that one's easy to miss. I don't know why. Just the way the camera is, it can easily hide that note. And I was looking for it for ages, and I was just like, Ah! Why must you do this to me, game? I need all 100, and I'm looking everywhere for that one. <laughs> but in here, you can find a mumbo token. Invulnerability protects you from the heat, because a whole bunch of the kitchen is just hot, 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 and Banjo will get hurt if he steps inside certain spots, so, uh, you know, be careful. Now look at these windows. They look exactly the same, right? Can't peck that. Oh, I can peck that. It's stuff like that that makes this level kind of annoying, because, you know... I remember, I, t I couldn't believe there was a way to get in through the ship that way. And there's like a Jiggy in here too, so it's actually, you need to be here in order to get all ten Jiggies, but still, it's like, some pieces of the scenery you can break and you can bust into, and some pieces of the scenery you can't, and it's just like, uh, what the hell? Why do you make it so some of the windows can be broken in, but not all of them? It, it's a really slight discoloration, you know? It's like, one window is brighter than the other, but it's very hard to tell, you know? There's this uncanny valley, like, you gotta really look at it, but once you see it, it's like, Oh, okay, I can see how the windows are kinda different. They're kinda different, but whatever. Now this puzzle, in case you're wondering why I know the solution, it's 312-111, and that's because somewhere on the ship, uh, there is a sign that says 312-111. We'll actually see it later. Uh, basically, once you find that number on the ship, you know that that's the order they want you to push the whistle blowing in. Uh, I think it's just the name, it's just the number of the ship, and, uh, you know. The solution is somewhere on the ship, I just happen to know it. Every time you play the game, it's always going to be the same. It's always going to be 312-111. So unlike the Brentilda answers for Grunty's past, uh, every time you play the game, it's going to be the same. So if you memorize 312-111, well, you're gold, baby. You're gold! Thank God when you step on the buttons in this computer room, nothing happens. <laughs> The ship doesn't just start exploding and stuff. What are you doing? Stop pressing things, Banjo! Ah! Any at the very top of the ship, you want to climb up here because there's going to be another mumbo token, a whole bunch of musical notes, and of course, a jiggy. The camera on Banjo-Kazooie's kind of awkward sometimes because, you know, uh, this was before we had, like, a right analog stick controlling the camera. Uh, well, before, as in, on the N64, they never had that. I'm pretty sure early PlayStation games did as soon as they introduced the analog uh, sticks because, you know, the original PlayStation controller didn't have analog sticks. And it felt really nice in your hands. It was so light and comfortable. I love the non-analog PlayStation controller. I don't know why, there's something about the feeling of that plastic. It's just like, ah, it's a dream. <laughs> but still, you know, other games like Ape Escape, I think they required analog controls, so they sort of came with analog stuff. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure Ape Escape needs the analog stick. But, um... 
And you know, then they added analog to the PlayStation 1, and then you can play games like Metal Gear Solid or whatever with an analog stick. And it made certain games so much better because, you know, it's a weird grace period, you know? When we were kids, we played games like the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and everything was like controller pads. And then when the N64, the PlayStation, and the 3D consoles started coming out, there, you know, we had polygonal graphics, we had control sticks, it was so, like, new and foreign to us. It was like, this is, we've never played games like this before, this is so weird. And I'll admit, uh, control sticks but themselves were kind of a weird concept. They were kind of weird to handle at first. I remember the first time, the first 3D game I ever played, uh, that wasn't Super Nintendo Sega Genesis. The first N64 game I ever played was Super Mario 64, right? And I just remember it was so odd playing Mario like this, where I had a control stick that if I tapped it lightly, he walked, and if I tapped it really hard, he ran, and I had to rotate it to throw Bowser around and stuff, and it was just like the weirdest thing in the world, and I was just like, wow. For a while, there were certain PlayStation games I just wanted to play with a control pad, and I wouldn't play it with an, a with an analog stick, I just preferred the pad. And, you know, if I could play an N64 game with a control pad, I would. And, you know, that still is the, f the case with certain games. Uh, Mega Man 9, Mega Man 10. On my Xbox 360, I could play it with the control stick or the pad, and I just prefer the pad for Mega Man because it's 8-bit, and I just feel like a pad is better for exact movement, but that's just me. Um, there's the 3 one 2 one, one, one. Uh, But, uh, you know, control sticks were weird back in the day, kids. If you started off with these consoles, oh yeah, control sticks are fine, but I swear, when you're a kid playing Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, NES games, and you had nothing but a controller pad, control sticks were weird. They were weird. Anyway, here's a poster of a female squirrel. Kinda looks like Conker. I don't know if this was like concept art for like Conker's 12 Tales or whatever the the Conquer game was supposed to be before it became Conquer's Bad Fur Day, but uh, I'd like to think that was a little preview of things to come. At least it was supposed to be, anyway. Anyway, the Gruntilda switch of Rusty Bucket Bay is on the, r the metal contraption in front of me, and I think this is the only way you get it, unless there is a better way, I'm not sure. But you want to jump from here and- OH! God! God damn it, that hurt. I'll just jump cut to the part where I make it, but, uh... You just have to make a really nice jump, and you should be able to ground pound that switch, no problem. That took me four tries, that's why I jump cut it. <laughs> Sometimes that jump is, like, really hard to make, and it's very pixel perfect, and Banjo ends up hurting his legs quite a bit every time you screw it up, too. Uh, I don't know if there is a better way to get that, or if I have a... If there was like a running jump I could have taken with like the talon trot or something. I didn't want to risk falling off the edge without jumping and stuff. I don't know, maybe there was a better way. Maybe talon trot is better, I've never actually tried it, but uh... That's how I get that Gruntilda switch. So now, you know, the ninth Gruntilda lair, Jiggy, is somewhere in the lair. And you hit the switch and it blows up the cargo hold entrance. And uh, we'll get a Jiggy in there. And booyah! A hundred musical notes. I'm only missing three Jiggies at this point. The Jinjo Jiggy, the Cargo Hold Jiggy, and... Well, the one I already... I was at before, but then I completely forgot about. I do like Rusty Bucket's uh, music, though. It's so fantastic. Well, again, this whole game's soundtrack is fantastic. <laughs> There's a red Jinjo, and the purple Jinjo's not too far away, and I'm gonna go get him now. But basically, he is in the water, and as I said, just being in the water suffocates Banjo. It's just that, that bad, you know? So you gotta dive in through this little hole here, and the pink Jinjo's there, and you gotta get him and get out really quickly, because again, you lose air twice as fast when you're in here. Booyah! Now get out, get out, get out. Who would collect those eggs on the sides? A crazy person would collect those eggs on the sides. That's what. <laughs> there you go. 
Why was I talking about control sticks? <laughs> I'm trying to think back and I'm like, why was I talking about that? Ah, uh, whatever. The viewers know. You were watching. Anywho, into the cargo hold, we actually have something of a boss fight. Oh god! Who dares enter Boss Boombox's hold? I've hidden my jigsaw. You'll never get it. So here's the gimmick with the boombox. He has a whole bunch of boxes inside of him, and each box that, you know, you unearth, it takes less hits to destroy, so eventually it just gets more tiny and more tiny and more tiny, and, uh, yeah. I don't think it's that bad, honestly, uh, as long as you just, you can actually just keep rolling, and generally nothing's really gonna hurt you, because they don't seem to rush me all at once, or at least they don't rush me so that I hit a box and then another box hits me as I get backed up or something, you know? Uh, I don't really find it that bad. I don't know if you can use the invulnerability golden feathers to destroy him, but, uh, you know. That's how you do it. It's not that bad. So, I'm not missing any honeycombs. I got all 100 musical notes, and the only jiggy I am missing is the one I completely missed in the area before. And, uh, so technically, if I wasn't stupid, <laughs> If I had looked in the bottom of that warehouse, I'd have all ten Jiggies right now. Uh, so I'm just going to jump cut back to when I realized where the tenth Jiggy was. Because there, there was actually a period where I was like, where the hell is that last tenth Jiggy? I was like, I was so confused why I didn't get it. Because in my test playthrough, I knew exactly where it was and stuff. But uh, there it is, to the bottom of the screen when you're on the crates. Booyah, there's your tenth Jiggy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Rusty Bucket Bay. So let's get the hell out of here because we got one more world to go until this whole sordid affair is over with and Gruntilda is at long last defeated and Tootie is saved and uh, the world is, you know, it's okay. Not great, but it's okay. <laughs> oh god, why did I just swim past the ladder? I don't know what I was doing. Like I said, I was wandering around looking for that last Jiggy because I couldn't believe I was only had 9 out of 10. I was like, what the hell am I missing? But anywho. Uh, so the Gruntilda Jiggy that we unlocked is just in the next room. And because the water is raised so high, it's at level 3 right now, uh, it can reach these cliffs, which will take us to a higher part of the castle, as well as this little extra area, which will take us to, believe it or not, another water-raising switch. So all you do, as soon as you leave the next tunnel and enter the next room, just swim up, and there's the Jiggy. The Gruntilda switch Jiggy. So that makes 9 out of 10 in the lair. Awesome. You smash this grating, and you can go up here to find the water raising switch. And this is used to find yet another, uh, the last, in fact, uh, Cheeto page that Cheeto, the magical spell book, has for us. But this time around, we have a 30 second time limit, and it will go back to three floors of water. So it's at four, flo four floors of water now. And you gotta go in the next room where the Rusty Bucket Bay overworld is. And as soon as you get in, just swim all the way to the top, because the entrance is pretty close to the to the bottom entrance. And there it is. Get to the stairs, get to the stairs. Three seconds to go. I'm good. <laughs> Alrighty, Cheeto, let's see what you got for us. Baron Bird getting good at finding Cheeto, so another spell they shall have. That traitor book has pushed its lock! So in the burning fire, I'll chuck! God, I love Grunny's rhyming. It's just its just fun writing, you know? <laughs> you gotta wonder, how is Gruntilda just coming up with these off the top of her head? Is she that smart? Does she have a spell that, like, makes her do that? I don't know. It's just funny. But, uh, so now that we got all the Cheeto pages, we got all the... Grunty switches that, uh, well, we've got all the grunty jiggies that we can right now. It's time to move on to the final world of the game, ladies and gentlemen. We're finally getting close to the end of this thing. Although the next world is definitely the biggest. 
and it will be taking up the most time, definitely. These tentacles you can destroy with golden feathers, or you can dodge them if you want, but they do hurt you. And, uh, you know, when you destroy them with the golden feathers, they do spawn honey. So, what the hell. <laughs> honey that gets stuck on the walls. <laughs> But here we have this giant open field, and up there, that's the entrance to Click Clock Wood, the last world of the game. And you know, technically, we have enough musical notes that we can actually rescue Tootie and go face off with Gruntilda now. When the back of Grunty's hand whoops your butts, you'll hardly stand! <laughs> that was a musical door, 765, I have 800, so technically, I could go and just face off with Gruntilda and rescue Tootie. But, uh, we still want to collect everything in this game, because who knows? There might be musical doors beyond the 765 that I'd like to get into. Yeah, you never know. Maybe I'll need those extra 10 jiggies to unlock some other painting. Uh, you never know. So, uh, you know. Flipping this switch will make the puzzle platform that you use to fill in the puzzle spawn. And we've actually had access to this puzzle room for a long, long time. But first, Gruntilda. Gruesome Gruntilda's favorite pastime is flying radio-controlled bats. Yeah, that sounds badass. I'd love that. This poor guy called Dirty Bertie was her first and only boyfriend. When she was younger, Grunty used to have a baby dragon as a pet. I don't know, that sounds pretty badass. Flies ra radio-controlled bats, has a baby dragon for a pet? Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> Any this cauldron under here, that takes us all the way back to where Treasure Trove Cove was. This is the gigantic shortcut pot I was talking about that takes you from, like, the beginning of the lair to the very end of the lair. And, uh, we have, we've had access to Click Clock Woods' puzzle room since the beginning of the game. Ever since we beat Mumbo's Mountain and entered the Treasure Trove Cove area, uh, that place has always been available to us. We just couldn't fill in the puzzle because the puzzle platform wasn't there. But, this is the entrance to Treasure Trove Cove, the second world in the game. There's a pool of water here, you swim under, and that's actually the Click Clock Wood puzzle area. So technically, we could have got the Mumbo token in here, and we could have talked to Brentilda, who's also in here when we got here. But, uh, you know, we didn't need to really come here until we had to fill in the puzzle, so I saved that for later. Oh yeah, the world's as big as it looks, by the way. Click Clockwood is easily the biggest world in the game, and it is the last one, so it's kind of fitting. And, uh, it's gonna be something else. Ugly Grunty's nickname was Hog Breath at which school? I wonder why. I also know that sweaty gorilla feet is her favorite smell. <laughs> and the old hag's favorite color is gruesome green. Well, her skin's green. Makes kind of sense. I mean, she is kind of vain. She has statues of herself everywhere. So, you know. When you look at yourself so much, maybe everything about you, you just, you just really grow to like. Her skin is green. She likes the color green. How about that? And Brent Tilda's skin is green too, so it's definitely genetic. <laughs> it's not like a toxic waste accident happened or something. But Brent Tilda's nice. She's pretty cool with having green skin, so I don't know. But anywho, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have filled in all the puzzle rooms. We have one more world to go. One more world, and then we could finally take the fight to Gruntilda and rescue Banjo's sister, Tootie. Uh, but Click Clockwood is definitely going to be the biggest world. Uh, I will not be beating it in under a half hour. There's a lot to this world. And uh, I do enjoy it. It has a fantastic theme song, but... Uh, Brace yourselves, because we're going into Click Clock Wood, and it's quite gigantic. So, uh, look forward to that in part 16. Toodles.